Hello and welcome to this photo speed video. As always, with me, Tim Jones. Today, I have been allowed and privileged to actually have the Canon Pro 1100 sat with me on the desk here, and it's the first time I've actually looked at it, kind of got my hands on it, and done some prints. And you can see here, I have done a lot of my own prints. Um, I've done picked about four images and done them across a platinum gloss art fiber from Photo Speed, which is kind of a semi gloss fine art kind of glossy paper, very similar to a dark cream type of paper. And I've also used an NST bright white because it's like staple of everyone on the shelf. So it's like a smooth high white matte fine art paper. Let's get let's get the elephant in the room out of the way that it pretty much looks like the Pro 1000. Yes, we will take that. It is the same chassis and the same head in this printer. The biggest of these updates is that now you can print in longer lengths. There still is no roll holder on this printer, so you are stuck with cutting off a 17 inch roll and feeding it in manually. On the Pro 1000, you were 1.2 meters, so quite a small area really. But now you can print up to three 0.27 meters. So that is huge, a really long length and 17 inches wide. So you can get those really big panoramics. So that's one big thing that has been upgraded and will be a welcomed upgrade for some photographers out there and some artists out there to really kind of get those really long prints that they want. The other thing they've done is they've upgraded the ink set in the printer. They've improved the ink, so there's better color gamut, mainly in the blue areas because it's trickier to print blues. Also in these inks, they have put wax in. Don't know how much, but that will also help the permanency and help that longevity. So now they're quoting that 200 year lifespan for a print, mainly down to that wax in there. But also what it has done is it's made the prints a little bit more scratch resistant. So I'm gonna test that actually, and see if it actually has made a difference. They don't feel any different to be fair, but those are the main differences of what it has done, what they've done. Let's stop telling you about the marketing material for this printer. And you can find all that out just by clicking the link in the description below to actually get onto photospeed.com and read all about the, the technical details of this printer and all the bullet points that Canon say. And you can go on the Canon website as well and get all that information. What we're really, really here to do is to look at how it prints and do the thing that everyone says you should never do is compare it to the previous model. How much of a leap forward is this printer. Let me get rid of this printer and then we'll have a look at the prints. Okay, so now that's done. I've got all the prints out here on the table. I've also switched on the overhead as well so you can see the differences. I'm also gonna do some close-up shots and things as well. Like I said, I've used two types of paper, matte and a fine art glossy, NST bright white for the matte and then platinum gloss art fiber all by photo speed for the glossy print. Now the first thing I want to look at, we're gonna move on to color in a second. But I want to look at this black density that Canon is saying are, is massively improved. Now, the reason why Canon say this is because they now use the formula of the matte black ink that they used on the release of the Pro 300 as well, which was said to be a little bit denser and have a little bit more of a kind of a deeper black. So one of the first things I did was print two pictures here with a lot of black in this picture of a rose here. Now, Basically, I wanted to just see how they print, so I use the black and white mode of the printer. I think we do have probably a clear winner, really, on black density. Now, I can't remember which way round these are, so I'm just gonna have a quick sneaky look, because to me, looking at them, just in here, I would say one of them looks a little bit grayer than the other. And good news for Canon, is that is the Pro 1000. So that ink is giving a deeper black on the 1100. It is giving a little bit more density in there. Detail wise, it's a tiny little bit sharper as well. That could be the age of our Pro 1000. 
but there is a difference. There, this almost looks on the Pro 1000 just a tad kind of gray, like a silvering in it, where next side by side, this one just looks a little bit denser. Now, singly, they both look black. It's just when you put them together, there is a difference. There is a difference. However subtle it is, there is a difference and it does improve that black for you. I'm going to be doing another video actually as well on this in a few weeks. Let everything settle down after this one. Um, and I'm going to have a look against the 1100 against the P900 from Epson. And that will be the battle of the blacks basically because both of those produce phenomenal blacks. And I want to see with this new upgrade and this new kind of blacks that they've put in the printer and this new ink set, how it actually looks and which one wins out. Now also um, on the photo black, which I've done here, this is a little bit closer to be fair. Uh, I would say, Pops, this is Pro 1000. Um, now this is a little bit closer. There's, there's not as much difference. The photo, honestly, I think detail wise, they look pretty similar. The black points look pretty similar as well, to be fair. Like I said, honest review here. I'm not gonna kind of not gonna lie to you about this. They look pretty similar, to be fair. Um, I would say this is the 1100 here in my hand here. I would say the details a little bit better on the 1100, um, but black wise, I, oh, I suppose I could say it's a little bit deeper. Again, the Pro 1000 just seems. Oh, it just seems a little bit. I don't know. It just seems a little bit like there's a silvering in there. Um, and on the black and white mode, possibly the 1100 is a little bit neutral, more neutral as well. So I think that that is a, an improvement in that sense. I think they've possibly tweaked the black and white mode on the 1100 as well. They haven't confirmed that, it's in none of their literature, but printing these out, the, the 1100 does seem a little bit more neutral to be fair. Um, so again, quite interesting. And there is some truth in their marketing material. There is that difference. And there is a slightly denser black on the 1100. Let's look at a color image, this color image here, which is the nice squirrel here. And it's kind of a nice warm type of shot. There's lovely detail in the fur and everything going on here. And I've printed it in both ways. I would say there's a color difference between the two. Um, I tried to use the same profiles or have custom profiles made for both. Um, I would say that possibly um, there's just a little bit different. With color images, what I noticed was the Pro 1000 printed a, a little bit darker, um, especially on the glosses for some reason. Now this could be due down to the profile or it could just be down to um, some upgrades on the 1100. Um, to match the screen, I think they were pretty close. Perhaps the 1100 was a bit light and the Pro 1000 was a bit dark, but fairly, fairly close to the screen. Um, this is the Pro 1000 on the left-hand side here. And then I've also got the 1100 on the right-hand side here. And the 1100 is a little bit lighter, as you can see, kind of at the top here. And it's probably, you could say, arguable, it has got a little bit more detail in the background as well. If you want that detail as another matter, because it's all lovely and blurred by the depth of field there. Um, it's not, I mean, where the shadows are blocking and things, they're blocking on both here. Um, yeah, I mean, punch wise, contrast wise, they both look pretty good to me. They both stand out off the page. Detail wise, I, there's not a massive, the, there is a slight difference airing towards the 1100, but it is quite subtle to be fair, but it is there. So it is an upgrade. It is sharper, very slightly. I'm quite impressed. This might be a good one just to test that scratch resistance. Mm, to be fair. Yeah, okay, I'll give them that. I'll give them this. Yeah, the Pro 1000 does scratch a little bit more. I'm not saying the 1100 doesn't scratch. I'm just doing a light kind of finger across the print here and it does scratch. I mean, if you press really hard, 
then obviously you're going to get a mark and you're going to get scratching. But just a light kind of finger across the print like that, you do get more of that coming through in the print than you do on the 1100 here. So again, that wax is working in the ink and that scratch resistance is really working as well. Okay, let's move on to some these color images here. And like I said, I think the big difference in, in this kind of bright and colorful kind of picture here was I wanted to see about the blues. But this it really illustrated how the Pro 1000 prints a little bit darker, or anyway, ours does, and how the, the, the 1100 did render the colors better. Um, the blues are better, there's more detail, especially kind of in some areas down here and things. And it is a, I think it is a better print, it's more vibrant. But like I said, maybe if we just up the exposure on this one, we'd get similar results. But this really did give a, a great result on this paper. And this is the platinum gloss art fiber as well, so nice punchy results. Um, and also the 1100 was a little bit closer to the screen, we have to say. I'm gonna move on to some matte papers. And I think this top one here is a little bit punchier. It has some better details in there and the black looks better as well. Um, now hopefully, yes, this is the 1100. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the Pro 1000. It just seems to lack a little bit of contrast on these kind of mid-tone images. But apart from that, I mean, I mean, side, uh, side by side, you see these differences, like in the road here, it's a little bit denser on the 1100 than the Pro 1000. But honestly, I mean, so take them apart, you would probably, you'd be happy with either, but for peace of mind, the 1100 gives that better print. It really does. It pains me to say that, but it really does. Now, the same is kind of similar for the, like the squirrel picture here. So again, I think this one is the better print, a little bit more detail in kind of the fur and things going on here. Again, we've got that difference here. So this is actually the 1100 print with that little bit more detail. And this is the Pro 1000 here. Again, I prefer the background actually in this print, but that's more of a cosmetic thing rather than an actual print kind of quality issue. Um, it's just printed a little bit lighter, the background as well. But again, perhaps we just get a better profile, I'll redo those custom profiles and we may have some better results in here. But I'm really kind of surprised by the matte performance. I think it that, that black really does make a difference. And the same really with the bugs here. I think, again, the color is absolutely fantastic and really does a great job. It really just pops off the page here. And that black really does intensify things. But let me just finish up with um, going back to the platinum gloss art fiber because I wanted to see about this blue. The blues are more intense on the 1100 and it does, it renders the sky a little bit better as well. Perhaps I could say the Pro 1000 is a little bit more natural, um, but I don't think it was edited in a natural way. I can safely say that after looking over all these prints and looking at this blue gamut on these prints here, that I can say that if you're looking for an A2 printer and you like Canon printers, then the 1100 is gonna be your printer of choice, it really is. I'm interested to know how the 1100 and the P900 from Epson kind of compare and print quality and things like that. When I did it with the 700 and 300, there wasn't too much difference to be honest. However, I'm interested to know this is a brand new printer with new technology as well. Some old technology like the chassis and bits, but some new technology in there as well with the ink set and how it uses the ink. And also this improved color gamut, which with these prints here, I can definitely see working. And I can definitely see that black density as well. That is there, it, it exists on the matte prints as well. A little bit harder to see on the kind of the gloss prints, like the fine art gloss prints. There was an improved detail level as well, especially in the fur of that squirrel and things like that. So it's well worth considering. If you have a Pro 1000 and you've had it for a long time and you're thinking about a new printer, then you can't go wrong with the 1100. A little bit more punch, a little bit more 
kind of density of black in there and also a little bit more vibrancy and color and things due to that expanded color gamut that this new ink set gives. So I hope that's been useful and actually a real world kind of comparison about how this printer actually kind of prints because I know there's a lot of um, videos out there just kind of looking at the features and things like that. So I thought I'd do some proper prints and give you my opinions and actually kind of real world test. Um, so yeah, I hope that's been kind of useful for you and has helped with your decision. Um, if you've got any questions at all, just pop them in the comments or you've got any obs observations on the 1100 as well, then please pop them in the comments. On that note, don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel and also sign up to the newsletter from Photospeed to check out deals on these printers and deals on paper and things like that as well. Just follow the links in the description below. I'll put everything in there. So until next week, bye-bye.